Hey folks, Dr. McCarthy here, and I want to welcome you to our Thursday evening workshop. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about thyroid conditions, and I, I've drawn a picture up here on the board, and I think this will make a whole lot of sense to you when we take some time and go through it piece by piece. Um, this is one of the things that I've been working with patients on for the past 10 years or so, uh, not treating patients thyroid disease per se but treating people's bodies treating people's physiology you, you got to understand all of this stuff and the issue is that most people don't understand it and they just kind of blindly accept their uh, prescription for Synthroid and they still feel like crap and they're not getting any better if you understand all of this stuff it'll make a whole lot more sense and the, our approach to helping people restore normal physiology to their body helps your thyroid heal itself and get better a whole lot. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we've created a series of DVDs and if you've seen my, uh, my video series here on Facebook, you know that I've got a DVD for all the different conditions that we see here in the office. And this is one of the first ones that we did, Breakthrough Treatments for Hypothyroid and Hashimoto's. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight, but this DVD, gives you a lot of information as to how we treat things very differently than traditional healthcare does. So I wanna just kinda of walk through normal thyroid physiology and then we'll talk a little bit about all the tests that you really need to have run. And there's not a week that goes by here where I don't get a new patient who's come into the office and said, I've been to my doctor, and they've run every test They've run all the tests. Oh, he did everything. Um, they did a complete thyroid panel. And then I say, okay, that's fine. Let's get a copy of the tests. And um, they, uh, they've run a TSH, and that's it. That's the only test that was run. That's not a complete thyroid panel. And you folks here who are watching the video tonight, when you are done watching this, you will understand more about thyroid physiology than many people in the traditional healthcare realm. They just don't get it. And if they did, they would be running the proper test. So let's start up in here. The hypothalamus is where it all begins. The hypothalamus is a gland up in your brain and folk, many folks call this the, uh, the master gland and it tells all of the other glands kind of what to do. The hypothalamus sends a signal down to the pituitary. That signal is thyroid releasing hormone. And it's just a signal. Hypothalamus says pituitary, hey, we need some juice here. We need some energy. So the pituitary says, okay, it responds in kind and it produces thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH is produced by your pituitary. It's thyroid stimulating hormone. It's a hormone that comes from your pituitary to stimulate your thyroid. Many people think that uh, mistakenly think that TSH is a thyroid hormone. No, TSH is a, uh, a hormone that affects your thyroid. It doesn't tell you what your thyroid is doing. So, I mean, just that fact alone right there, if somebody runs, if a, 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 a traditional healthcare provider runs a TSH test alone, that doesn't tell you anything about what the thyroid's doing. You may be able to infer something, but you will not know. You've got to get the whole picture put together. So the pituitary kicks out the TSH and the thyroid says, okay, we need some. Okay, good. The thyroid will start to produce thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. And it produces a whole lot of T4, about 93% of the, the, the total hormones produced by your thyroid, 93% are T4 and only about 7% are T3. That's normal physiology. The issue is that T4 is basically the inactive form of the hormone, and T3 is really the, the only active form that has an impact on the cells of your body. And thyroid hormone is so critically important that there are receptors for thyroid hormone on every cell in your body, every cell will react directly to thyroid hormone. So if thyroid hormone wasn't a big deal, many cells in your body wouldn't have receptors. Does that make sense? I mean, this is important, important stuff. The issue is that the T4 needs to get converted into T3. And when that conversion takes place, you know, 
you got a great life. You don't have any problems as far as energy or weight problems. But this is something that very frequently is not even checked. Many folks will just check a TSH level and you can see already that that's not going to work. Or if you check TSH and T4 alone, total T4, that's not going to cut it either. You need to know how that conversion is taking place. The issue is that the conversion from T4 to T3 takes place inside your liver and your gastrointestinal tract. So if you've got some issues with your liver, like congestion in your liver, not, not even overt liver disease, but just congestion in your liver, and um, you're taking multiple different medications, you know, we see lots of folks here who are taking 8, 10, 12 different prescription medications. That causes liver issues. So if your liver is not very efficient, you're not going to be able to convert your T4 into T3. T3 is the one that gives you that, that get up and go. But your doctor checked your TSH and your T4 and they both look normal. But your liver is congested, you're not converting, you feel miserable. But your doctor says you're fine. So now I'll tell you, well, maybe it's all in your head. Another place is your gastrointestinal tract, your digestive system. How many people have digestive problems in this world, right? Especially here in this country, in Eastern North Carolina. Everybody's taking these proton pump inhibitors and omeprazoles and the, oh, the H2 agonists. You know, you got GERD and reflux, like this disease is taking over your body. And the only way it's going to fix you is you got to drink these pills, you know, drink the potion. Um, that's not the case. But the issue is if you've got GI tract problems, and liver congestion, you're going to have problems converting your T4 into T3, and you're going to have all the classic signs of hypothyroidism. Uh, for females, we'll see thinning of the hair, uh, thinning of the outer third of the eyebrows. Uh, for any folks dealing with hypothyroidism, you'll see I'm gaining weight. I, I'm not doing anything differently. I still exercise. I eat the same foods, but all of a sudden gaining weight. Um, I had a nice young person in here today who's gained 30 pounds in the past six months. That's not normal. And, and the doctor said, well, we'll run the whole thyroid panel. They checked her TSH. That's not a thyroid panel. So luckily she found us and we're going to help her get her life back again. Uh, but the, the classic signs are that, you know, the, the gain weight easily, can't lose weight, depression, lack of motivation, uh, insomnia, uh, no energy. It's just, it's, it's gut-wrenching to see people go through this. Yet when you go to the doctor and they don't run the right tests, it can take years to get these issues properly diagnosed. Some sources say that the average person with hypothyroid takes up to seven years to get a proper diagnosis. Seven years? Do you have seven years of your life to just give away? No, the issue is if you have all these signs and symptoms that we just talked about and you go to your doctor and your doctor ran a TSH or a TSH and a T4 and says everything's fine and everything's normal, you need to find another place to go. All right? This is what we do here in our office. We run all of these tests. So I'll continue going through them. The T4 uh, gets converted into, 20% of it gets con converted into T3 sulfate and T3 acetic acid. And 20% gets converted into reverse T3. T3 sulfate, T3 acetic acid are basically inactive forms. Uh, they're not going to have an impact on your body physiology like free T3 will. The reverse T3 is kind of like a stored form. It doesn't have an impact on the individual cells, but it's kind of just hanging out in storage. So if we can look at these forms here, I mean, you gotta, you gotta check for this one. Check reverse T3. And I'm gonna go over that in a little while. Um, another very important thing that you need to have checked are thyroid antibodies. And typically, when I sit here and do my, my live workshops in front of live folks, I'll say, how many people in here have had their thyroid antibodies checked? And most people say, my what? Well, if you don't know what it is, you haven't had it checked. I promise you. And it's very rare that somebody will come in here with their blood work or 
will fax a records request off to somebody's traditional healthcare provider asking for the blood work that was done. Very rare, one in a hundred, that we see that thyroid antibodies were checked. There's two different types, thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. And if you have antibodies against either of these enzymes here, it is going to completely screw up your thyroid physiology. If you've got antibodies that messes up your thyroid, that's what's commonly known as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, Hashimoto's isn't really a thyroid disease. It's an autoimmune issue. So it's a, a problem in your immune system. And I could spend another hour talking about why your immune system has issues. But one of the things that I can tell you is that 80% of your immune system lives inside your gut. So if you're one of these people down here that has GI tract issues and you're dealing with thyroid type symptoms, you had better get your thyroid antibodies checked. It might not even be a thyroid problem. And then countless times I'll see people who have been diagnosed with Hashimoto's and their doctor doesn't mention anything about their immune system, doesn't do anything to address gut health, they just simply write them a prescription for Synthroid or Levothyroxine or whatever it might be. And folks, that's never going to fix the problem. It's kind of like the immune system is throwing gasoline on the fire that happens to be eating up your thyroid. And then you take a little bit of Synthroid, it's like putting a little thimble full of water on the fire. Thimble full. A thimbleful. That's never going to fix the problem. What you need to do is have your immune system evaluated, find out what's making your immune system mess up, go wonky, and start to attack thyroid function. And if you can figure that out and fix those things, you don't need thyroid hormones. You fixed the problem. You know, it's kind of like if you're, if you're driving along and the, uh, the oil light comes on in your car and you, you pull into the, the, um, the, the repair shop and you say, I got a problem. The guy says, I can fix that. Let's um, put a little black spray paint on your dashboard lights. That didn't fix your problem. You know, it covered up the warning sign. And that's a dangerous, dangerous thing to do when you're talking about your body. If you cover up warning signs on your car, you know, you wouldn't even do that. But if you did, you know, big deal, you, 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 you destroyed a twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar hunk of metal, right? But you, you still wouldn't think of doing that. Yet, we are lining up by the, you know, thousands to get pills to cover up our warning signs inside of our body. So as you take this, these pills that make you feel better, and they give you that false sense of security that your body's working better, you're actually getting worse. Right? That's one of the big issues in autoimmune problems. So, you know, if you've got a problem um, getting the, the proper testing done, you need to call our office. And again, you know, just like we always do, when I'm done this evening, I'm going to take uh, questions down below in the comments section and I'll put my phone number up in there. You can find my phone number on my uh, on the um, the Facebook page. Part of the feedback loop is when the T4 goes up, the TSH goes down, and then vice versa. It's that feedback loop. What we've got now is when you've got high T3 and T4, your pituitary senses that and it will start to decrease your TSH. It'll tell your thyroid, hey, we got plenty, chill out. Does that make sense? T3 and T4 go up, TSH goes down. The inverse of that is when you've got low T3 and T4, your hypothalamus picks that up and says, hey, we better kick out some thyroid releasing hormone, tell the pituitary to kick out some more thyroid stimulating hormone. So it's this feedback loop that goes like this. But you've got to be able to look at these things rather than just one simple test in isolation. You've got to look at all of these. Look at them together. One of the things that we, uh, I, I just saw this not too terribly long ago from a really smart mentor of mine. There's this great box right here. And it's kind of like, you know, when, when, when your doctor 
takes your, your lab tests and you read them off the piece of paper, and this really gets my goat. They'll say, well, here's your TSH, and here's your T4, and here's your cholesterol, and then those are the only three tests on that page, and you gotta flip to the next page, and then you gotta flip to the next. So, you know, I'll get 12 different tests, but it's like 17 pages of paper. So when I get these faxes, they're contributing to killing trees. I mean, it just doesn't make sense the way they list them. However, if you could take these results and put it into this matrix over here, uh, Dr. Brock showed me this one, this is phenomenal. If you could put it into this matrix here, it just helps to make a whole heck of a lot more sense. So this line here represents TSH, this line represents total T4, total T3, and reverse T3. Down here, this is free T3 and free T4. You see the total T3 and free T3, the difference between those two is thyroid binding globulin. Total T4 and free T4, the difference between that is thyroid binding globulin. When thyroid binding globulin lets go, then you've got a free T4 or a free T3. All right? These are really the ones that we want to measure. Well, I mean, we measure them all, but these are the ones that we want to measure to make sure that you don't have an issue with thyroid binding globulin. Uh, this was once explained to me, and I, I like the analogy. Thyroid binding globulin is like taxi cabs that drive the thyroid hormone around, but it's supposed to dump the passengers off. And if it doesn't, if it just keeps driving you around, driving you around, then the cells of your body don't get thyroid hormone, and that can give you that um, false sense of a hypothyroid problem, when in that case it's really a thyroid binding globulin issue. And there's lots of reasons that people can develop thyroid binding globulin issues like cortisol and blood sugar and stress. And we don't have any blood sugar or stress issues here, right? So, you know, again, it's just another test that needs to be done. And if it's not done, you're never going to know what's wrong. So let's just take these for an instance here. And then here's our, our antibodies, thyroglobulin antibodies and thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So I've drawn these lines, these vertical lines here, and this represents like the high end of the normal range and the low end of the normal range. And one of the things that we look at, I'll just use TSH as an example, is that lab ranges are just way too broad. And for, for, you know, for mine and most functional medicine practitioners, the lab ranges are just insanely broad. Many labs will have TSH somewhere around 0 0.5 to 5.0. That's what they say is normal. So if you come in at 0 0.6, they say absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with your thyroid. We have no idea what's going on with the thyroid because that's just thyroid stimulating hormone. I say much more stringent guidelines. My normal range is 1.8 to 3.0. So if we look at that here in TSH, this would be like 1.8 to 3.0. And if you come in right in the middle of that, everything's perfect. Total T4, total T3, reverse T3, same thing. So if we say, let me use a different color here. Let's say we, we look at your TSH and it comes out up in here. And your total T4 is in here. And your total T3 is in here. And your reverse T3 is in here. All right. So your TSH is in the normal range, but it's high. The total T4 is low, total T3 is low, reverse T3 is high, and you look something like that. All right? That's a normal feedback loop. Remember, TSH goes high, T4, T3, low. That's the normal feedback loop. Conversely, T4 and T3 go high, TSH goes low, reverse T3 goes low, Okay, in the normal range, that's fine. High T3, T4, decrease your TSH. Normal feedback loop. The problem is, what happens when we see lab tests that people come back here? Here's your TSH, here's your T3, here's your T4, here's your reverse T3, right? Well, now, if your doctor just ran that test, you're in the normal range, you say there's nothing wrong. If your doctor maybe just ran that one and that one, you're still both in the normal range, but that's not a normal relationship 
between TSH and total T4. See, there, there's got to be a normal relationship. So you need to make sure. What if the T4 is very high and the T3 is very low? Well, now, that's not a thyroid, um, a primary thyroid problem. That's a conversion issue. It could be problems down here with liver or GI tract, but you don't know until you put it into this, this matrix here. Same thing with free T4 and free T3. So you, you want to make sure that thyroid binding globulin is not an issue. So if your T3 and T4 are here, free T3 and free T4 are here, they're both in the same range. They both have that same type of linear relationship where they're both high. You know, things look good there. Not a problem with thyroid binding globulin. And then, of course, if you've got either one of these thyroglobulin antibodies or thyroid peroxidase antibodies, then again, your issue is autoimmune. That would be autoimmune hypothyroid. And then down here, you can also run TSI antibodies. Again, that would be indicative of uh, Graves or hyperthyroid. But again, you know, it's still autoimmune. So, you know, hopefully this, this makes a little bit more sense to you. You've got to get the whole feedback loop evaluated. And then if you can plug these figures into a matrix like this and make sure that there's a relationship. See, if this is your normal range and everything comes back just inside that normal range, that's not normal. That's not, that's not optimal. And that's what we're looking for is optimal. So if you are having issues with any of the symptoms we've talked about, the insomnia, the depression, the lack of motivation, gaining weight, can't lose weight, trying exercise, my eyebrows are falling out, my hair is falling out, I'm constipated, you know, I go once every three days. If, if this is what's going on with you and you've been told that we ran a complete thyroid panel and everything's normal, this is an offer I'm making to you. Grab your labs and you can call my office. All right? I, will, I will talk with you on the telephone. You can fax me your labs. I will look at your labs. And this will be my, my Christmas gift for you. All right? Over the course of the next week, if you're interested, I will look at your labs. Where are you going to get a doctor to look at your labs for free? No charge. All right? I, I, I just made this up right now. I'm just, this is what I'm going to do for you. Because this frustrates me. This is one of the most poorly managed conditions that we see in healthcare in this country and I'm going to help you figure things out and you know it, uh, there's many many people who have to take Synthroid and that's fine if you do there's no problem but if you're one of the people that's taking Synthroid and you still feel like crap and you still have all those symptoms you've got to get this evaluated and I'm here to help you so again just you know Send, um, send us a note down at the bottom. Don't put any of your private health information here. You know, we can discuss that. You can message me or you can call me, better yet. And, um, you know, if you have any general questions, by all means, go ahead and comment down below. But hopefully, you know, this video makes sense. Um, hopefully, you've gained something out of this. And by all means, if this resonates with you, if it makes sense, be sure to like it. Uh, share it with your friends. Share it with other folks who are dealing with the same type of issues like this. Um, and I just want to—I um, want to close with one one last little piece. Many of those symptoms, depression, lack of motivation, fatigue, insomnia, are just brushed aside by traditional healthcare. Well, you're just getting old. Get a little exercise. You know, well, I don't want to get a little exercise. I'm, I, I'm depressed. I, I don't have any motivation. I've got no energy and I didn't sleep last night. Don't be pushed aside. Don't be pushed aside. If you are dealing with this, this is real stuff. And I'm here to validate you. This is real stuff. And we see this on a daily basis here in my office. The good news is that you don't have to live that way forever. That's another thing we see on a daily basis here. Patients in my office getting their health back, getting their life back, going back to work. People who couldn't drive start driving. People who weren't working couldn't work. Um, I got one fellow right now who dropped out of school. Now he's in med school. Fantastic. I mean, this is what excites me. Don't accept you're just going to have to learn how to live with it. Or at your age, how many times people have been told that? At your age, that's normal. Baloney, it's not normal. You're having issues, call me, and I look forward to helping you. Thanks.